The more you study, the better. But what if you don't feel like studying at the moment? Instead of giving up, gear down and find ways of learning Chinese that suit your current state of mind. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. In this week's episode, we are going to talk about what to do when motivation runs low and you don't really feel like studying. The most common thing to do in this situation is probably to stop studying and do something else instead, such as watching videos of cute cats or maybe scrolling through your social media feed. That doesn't take you closer to your goal for learning Chinese, of course, and so there are better alternatives. And I'm not suggesting that you should just force yourself to do something you don't actually want, but I am suggesting that you try to find ways of learning Chinese that are actually in line with your current state of mind. So if you find yourself reading in your textbook and it is mind-numbingly boring, then you should have a range of other reading activities that are maybe not as boring. And if you feel like uninstalling your flashcard app, don't force it. Do something else that helps you learn Chinese instead, but which you don't think is as frustrating. This doesn't necessarily mean that you throw away your textbook and really do uninstall your flashcard app, but it does mean that when you really don't feel like doing these things, you should have a backup, or you should have several backups of other activities that will take you closer to your goals, but which are easier to manage and that you can do even if you don't really feel like studying. And this depends a little bit on what your definition of studying is here. So if you regard studying as sitting down working with a textbook or with a flashcard app, then maybe it's time to broaden your horizons a little bit and realize that there are many other things you can do that will also teach you Chinese. So when you feel frustrated or when you just don't have any motivation to study, instead of doing something completely different, you should have a range of activities you can fall back to that are easier to perform, that don't require you to focus a lot, maybe are easier, more relaxing or more fun. And some of these activities might not give you as much or make you make progress as quickly in the language. But remember, we are comparing with not doing anything at all. And then doing something is always better than doing nothing. Still, I don't want to imply that making something arduous or difficult necessarily makes it more efficient. Learning Chinese is, after all, not a competition in masochism, so even if you could increase the difficulty of something and make it more boring and so on, this obviously doesn't mean that you will learn more, and in the same vein, if you make something easier and more fun, it doesn't necessarily mean you learn less. But on the whole, learning still requires effort and attention especially, and we can't expect something that is relaxing and something we have on in the background to teach us as much as something we give our full attention. And typically, giving something our full attention is more demanding than doing something in the background. I think this discussion about having fun and enjoyment while learning a language is very important. I mean, it's one thing to say that it's good to have fun while doing something, but I want to say that if you don't think it's fun or if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you are not going to be able to invest thousands of hours into learning Chinese. And if you somehow are able to force yourself to do this, even though you don't like it, well, congratulations, but very, very few people can actually do this. So if you are unable to find enjoyable ways of learning Chinese, the end result will almost always be that you spend less time. And time is the most important factor when determining how much you will actually learn. So finding ways you enjoy learning will lead to more Chinese in the long run. And that is extremely important. And this is especially true if you're trying to spend a lot of time learning Chinese, such as in an immersion program or if you're studying full time. You really need to take this seriously. So, in general, a basic rule of thumb should be that if you don't like engaging in a certain activity, you probably shouldn't. Naturally, this doesn't mean that you should skip listening just because you don't like listening. It just means that if a particular listening exercise in your textbook, for example, is something you don't enjoy doing, well, then you need to explore other ways of learning that thing, maybe finding more interesting and engaging listening content, for example. Another example might be if you heed the advice I often give to listen more and you try to increase the amount of Chinese you listen to, but you don't like the particular podcast you have available, well, then you should probably find another podcast. And conveniently, this is something we talked about two weeks ago in episode 115, the 10 best free Chinese listening resources for beginners, intermediate and advanced learners. 
So this is where it becomes important to have an arsenal of learning activities across a spectrum ranging from those that are very demanding and require your full attention to those that are fairly easy and don't require that much attention. And like I said earlier, it could be that some of the less demanding activities here don't teach you as much, but it's still important to have these because these are still much better than nothing. And in this episode, I'm mostly going to use listening as an example because it's fairly convenient, but you can also apply this to any part of learning Chinese or indeed any part of learning anything else in your life too. In order to illustrate what I'm talking about here, I'm going to share with you an example, which is a little bit tricky because we all differ when it comes to what we think is demanding, what is relaxing and so on. So it could very well be that you don't necessarily agree with the list I've given here. And of course, it also matters what level you are on. If you just started learning Chinese, some of the things that I list here will be completely impossible. And obviously they would not be suitable as learning activities at all. But I'm just including these activities here to show you that how you can rank activities from being very demanding to being not very demanding at all. So the most demanding thing on my list here is someone reading a written news article aloud about a topic that is new to me. And this of course has several things that makes it very difficult. So if I were to listen to something like this in Chinese, I would probably have to focus a lot and doing so would be rather taxing, especially if it's an area I'm not familiar with. And so if I were tired here, maybe I could be physically tired, I haven't slept well, or I have many other things to do, or I just don't feel like studying Chinese at the moment, Instead of just abandoning the plan to learn Chinese entirely and watch cute cats on YouTube, I could just move down the list until I encounter something I am okay with doing. And maybe it won't be number two on the list or number three, maybe number five or six, but we'll see. So the second thing on my list is to listen to rapidly spoken, regionally accented Mandarin in a TV show I'm not familiar with. This is not something I do very often. I know some people get all their spoken Chinese from TV and movies, but I'm not one of them, which is indeed a good example of what may be relaxing then. So if you're used to watching TV, maybe you have some shows that you like, putting on one of those shows might be quite relaxing for you and not maybe feel as much as studying. So you might be okay with doing that, even if you don't want to say, listen to something in your textbook. For me though, this would be still rather taxing. So let's keep moving down the list. Number three is listen to someone introducing or teaching something I don't know much about to an audience. And now we're talking about spoken language, so no longer someone reading something, for example, and it is intended to teach something. And I've been learning Chinese for a while, so if it's intended for someone who don't know anything about this topic, it should be perfectly fine for me to pick this up in Chinese, no problem. However, it is still new content, so I still probably need to focus on this. And if it's difficult content, say quantum mechanics or something, I would have to focus a lot, obviously. So these activities are still quite demanding. So let's say I am really tired. I don't want to do these things that normal people would still call studying. I want to do other things. So let's keep moving down the list. The next one is listen to someone I know talking about a topic I know well. So here we're talking about the speaker and the content being familiar. And here it stops feeling like studying to me. So this is something I do daily and I don't even think of it as learning Chinese, but obviously I'm learning a lot. And if we move further down the list now, we will get into territory of things that people normally maybe don't count as serious studying, but still is very important because you are able to do a lot of this just exactly because it is fairly easy to do. So the last four items here on my list are listening to something that I've listened to before, albeit not necessarily studied the content. And the next one is listen to something about Chinese or China in English or Swedish. And the next one is listen to something I've both listened to and studied thoroughly before. And the final one is to listen to Chinese music when I know the lyrics by heart already. So the core idea in this episode that I want to return to now is that what most people do is that they don't consider some of these things as studying. So, well, if you study the lyrics of a song in Chinese, I think most people would consider that studying. But then listening to that song in the background while you're doing something else, or maybe just humming along a little bit, does that count as studying? Well, a little bit, uh, at least more than nothing. I think everybody can agree with that. And listening to something in another language about Chinese, does that count as studying? For example, does listening to this podcast count as studying? I mean, I'm speaking English here and I haven't used much Chinese at all today. So does this count as studying? 
Well, yes, of course, all of this counts as studying, although that doesn't necessarily mean they are equally good for your Chinese. If you do have the energy to listen to something in Chinese instead, if you have the energy to, say, go through a text you've been wanting to read for a while, even though it's hard, then you should of course do those things and don't listen to my podcast. But if you really don't feel like learning more Chinese, you've done all these things and you want to do something else, then I'm sure that listening to this podcast is more helpful for your Chinese than watching cute cats on YouTube or listening to a podcast about something that isn't at all related to Chinese. So I'm not saying that my podcast is more useful than other ways of, say, reading, listening to Chinese itself, obviously not, but I am saying that it's more useful than nothing. The same goes for music or background listening in general. So if you hear Chinese in the background while doing something else, and that something else might be something that requires your full attention at work, for example, does that really help? Well, you will listen into that Chinese in the background a little bit occasionally, and this is still better than nothing. So the question here is not, is this more useful than the most useful thing you can think of? The question is, is this better than nothing? And in your current state of mind, when you aren't that motivated and when you don't feel like studying, this might be the only way you can get any Chinese at all. And so if you take this concept seriously, and instead of switching to something else entirely, you gear down and do something that is slightly easier while still being connected to Chinese, if you pursue this for a long time, the gains will be rather significant compared to if you just did something else. When we're talking about states of mind and energy levels and what we feel up to, it's important to note that these things are very individual. They also vary over time, and I mean that both in the short term, so over a day, but also in the long term, over a lifetime. And in the short term, it's important to plan your activities in a way that means you can make the most out of the times when you do have a lot of energy to do certain things that require a lot of energy. So, for example, if you are not a morning person and you feel that it's very difficult to get anything complex done at all in the morning, well, then you probably shouldn't put your most demanding learning activities in the morning. Instead, you should focus on getting routine things done in the morning that don't require you to have a lot of energy. And then in the afternoon, when your energy levels are rising, then you can tackle the more difficult problems. The reverse is equally true and perhaps even more important, and that means that if you are a morning person, you should not put your routine tasks right after breakfast, because that's when you should be doing your most demanding tasks, and you then save the routine tasks for later when your energy levels are going down. And like I said earlier, this is highly individual, and there is a concept called biological prime time, which essentially says that different people have different times during the day when they are especially active or when it's suitable to do things that are more demanding. And by trying to monitor and introspect a little bit, you can figure out when during the day you really should be doing these demanding things and during which hours you should probably aim for the easier learning activities. This is very similar to the concept of time quality, i.e. about studying the right thing at the right time, something we talked about in episode 86. The takeaway here, though, is that you should always strive to adjust what you're studying to your current state of mind and your energy levels. If something is too demanding, well, then try to find something less demanding to do. And, of course, the opposite is also true. If you feel up to doing demanding kinds of studying, do those before you do the routine things that you could have done at any time. Let's talk a little bit more about less demanding ways of learning Chinese, because I think most of you would be able to write down demanding tasks, because these are after all the kinds of activities that textbooks suggest and that you've seen in your courses, and maybe the things that traditionally are considered studying in the first place. The first thing I want to mention is that it's important to keep in mind that coming up with low-demand activities can in itself be a high-demand activity. So, in effect, that means that if you feel that your energy levels are going down and that this activity you're doing now is too demanding and you want to give up, if you only then start thinking about what you're supposed to do instead, you're probably going to switch from Chinese entirely. What you should do instead, and you can do this right now if you want, or next time you feel you have a lot of energy, is to try to write down other ways of learning Chinese that aren't as demanding as those that you normally engage in. And this usually involves a lot of preparation too. So for example, if you want to have Chinese music to listen to, you need to make sure it's available, you need to make sure you actually have listened to Chinese music so you have some familiar tunes to listen to, right? 
And if you're going to re-listen to something, because that's much easier, you need to have saved listening material so you can listen to it again and have it accessible on your phone, for example. So to summarize, it's worthwhile spending some time where you feel energetic and motivated to write down and prepare some activities that you can then use next time you don't feel so motivated. Because when you are in that state of mind, you are very unlikely to be able to be creative enough to come up with these alternatives. This is something I covered in an article called What's your next step to master Chinese? And I'll put a link in the description. So let's look at a few concrete ways of making tasks easier or less demanding. And the first one is to lower the difficulty. This should be rather obvious and it works for everybody except beginners, where then of course everything will be challenging. But if you have reached an intermediate level, if you just tackle content that is made for someone who is slightly less well versed in Chinese than you are, well, it's going to be less demanding. Like I've said several times now, this doesn't necessarily mean that it's worse, because if you are listening or reading to things that are slightly easier, it also means you will be able to cover a lot more language, more characters, more spoken words and syllables and so on. And this type of extensive listening and reading is very good in the long run. The next thing you can do is to let your interest guide you, because motivation is a powerful thing. If you are truly motivated to understand or to do something, it will feel much easier to do. And like I said, it's not a competition in masochism. Just because something is fun doesn't mean it's less efficient. And if it's boring and arduous, that doesn't make it a better activity. So try to find ways of learning you really enjoy. And for me, this means a couple of things. I mentioned conversations earlier. I also listen to music. But I also like watching games, like live commentary of, of esports and computer games. Uh, currently Valorant, but historically I've spent a lot of time watching and listening to Chinese broadcasts of StarCraft games. And I also enjoy, for some reason, watching Li Yongle Lao Shi videos. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, I'll put links in the description to these things. But these are just things that I happen to enjoy doing and they don't feel like studying. So if I'm tired after, say, teaching or doing something else work related, I might sit down and watch these things just because I enjoy it. It does not feel like studying. And for you, it depends on your level, your interests and so on. You need to find these activities that don't feel like studying. One of the most common examples of this should probably be to watch movies, video clips and TV shows in Chinese. And if you find something you really like, you can watch it again, you can extract the audio and listen to it. And if you really enjoyed it, then listening to something again or watching something again doesn't really feel like studying, it's not very hard, but it will definitely help you learn more Chinese. The last thing I want to mention is that listening to music is definitely underrated. If you build up a repertoire of songs you have listened to, maybe you've studied the lyrics to some of them, you can just put these songs on in the background. And if you do this for a long enough time, you will memorize the lyrics almost automatically. And this works as a kind of reviewing of the words, of the grammar and everything. And it definitely does not feel like studying. And like I said earlier, this is a very low effort way of studying. And of course, you can't expect the same results from listening to Chinese in the background while you work, for example, compared with, say, having an engaging conversation with someone in Chinese and listening to every word they say and really trying to make sense of it. That was going to take you much further, but I think everybody understands that. As I've said many times, the alternative is to do nothing, and then something is always better. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies.